Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vamp and I'll be your narrator. Now take my hand and let's go on a little hike because today we're talking about the Devil's Kettle. Even though the mystery of this place has reportedly been solved recently, this little piece of nature has always fascinated me, so let's just dive right in to see what this is all about. So, what is the Devil's Kettle? Well, in Judge C.R. Magny State Park on the north shore of Lake Superior in Minnesota, there's a rock and waterfall formation. It's called the Devil's Kettle because of the strange feature of this waterfall, a kettle that makes water disappear. Potholes, or kettles as they're sometimes called, are not in themselves a really strange geological feature, when a stream pours over a waterfall, the force of the water can wear a hole in the rock as the water swirls around. It can also pick up small pebbles and sand. Over time, these can carve out an elliptical, kettle or pot-like hole. What's so strange about this waterfall and gives it the devil in its name is that the Brule River seems to just disappear into a hole in the rocks. The park trail states, hike along the Brule River, down about 175 stairs and past the upper falls to reach the Devil's Kettle Falls. Here, the river splits around a mass of volcanic rock, half plunging 50 feet into a pool and the rest pouring into a massive pothole. Plan to spend one and a half to two hours on this hike. The Brule River in general is famous, especially in the upper Midwest, is an exceptional trout stream and its name Brule comes from the French word Brule like creme brule. So, this translated to Burnt River, which, as CN Traveler speculates, is a souvenir of an early forest fire. Yet, the part of this river that vanishes into the Devil's Kettle is our focus for today. Where does it go? How's it sucking up this famous river? For a while, the Devil's Kettle was a mystery. There had to be an exit point somewhere, right? Over the years, researchers and the curious poured dye, ping pong balls, and even logs into the kettle, but there was never any sign of them. One source states, And this baffling situation only gets weirder when geologists start explaining Devil's Kettle. Consider, for instance, the sheer quantity of water pouring into the kettle every minute of every day. While the notion of some kind of broad underground river is an exciting device in movies, the reality is that these sort of deep caves are rare and only form in soft rock like limestone. Northern Minnesota, as geologists will tell you, is built of stronger stuff. In harder rock, like local rhyolite and basalts, tectonic action can sometimes crush underground rock layers, creating a much more permeable environment for water. Unfortunately, there's no evidence of a fault line in the area, and even if there were, it's unlikely the kettle could continue draining the brulee indefinitely. Storms and erosion send debris, sometimes as large as boulders and trees, over the falls into the kettle. If the drainage route was in effect, an underground gravel bed at some point would clog. This place is seemingly endless. To make this all more confusing is that the geology of the region isn't conducive to creating caves or underground rivers. As we said, these deep underground caves form in areas with lots of limestone, and northern Minnesota simply isn't known for that. The nearest limestone to this park is, in fact, hundreds of miles away in southern Minnesota. So we can almost definitely throw that idea away as any sort of solution to this mystery. Not that people gave up trying to figure out the mystery, though. One young man claimed he repelled 26 feet into the hole and never saw the bottom. People thought maybe it went to Canada, since Canada isn't that far away. Seriously, there's no shortage of theories here. Even videos of the Devil's Kettle don't seem to reveal anything at all. Measurements show that no water was actually leaving the river either, which means that all this water has to be coming up somewhere. Hell, local legend says that one visitor even pushed a car into the kettle, though I'm I'm not so sure that I believe that one, especially considering one source states the area is inaccessible by road. I mean, anything's possible, but that would certainly be a waste of a car at best. Another idea is that millions of years ago, a hollow lava tube had formed beneath the falls in the subsurface layer of basalt. Over time, the theory posits the falling water eroded the rhyolite surface and punched straight down into the ancient lava tube, providing a wide open access to the floor of Lake Superior. Lava 
tubes do seem like a contender at first. There's some incredible lava tube caves located in Flagstaff, Arizona, for example, and Hawaii, considering that the islands were created by volcanoes, are incredibly known for them. NPS has a handy diagram on their site about how lava tubes form. To summarize, large rivers of lava flow in channels. Central currents are hot, while slow-moving edges thicken and cool. Superheated lava begins downcutting through the ground in a process known as thermal erosion, and lava will typically drain from its tube. Dripping formations may develop, and you're left with an underground passageway. Dripping water from lava tube ceilings was especially important for native Hawaiians looking for drinking water, as this water was filtered through porous lava rock. Lava tubes also have their history in ceremonies and burials as well. However, while these may be common in Hawaii, could they really exist in Minnesota? Does the climate allow for that? Well, as my source states, again, there are problems with this theory, primarily that the local basalt is a type known as flood basalt, which spreads out as a flat sheet when ancient lava bubbled up from the fissures in the ground. Lava tubes form in basalt flowing down the slopes of volcanoes, and even if the geology of northern Minnesota had somehow created an exception to that rule, no lava tubes have ever been found in any of the hundreds of exposed basalt beds in the area. Even with these theories, we're left with more questions than answers. With all these logs and debris being thrown in, why wouldn't the kettle be clogged? <laughs> the CN Traveler jokes that the kettle can't be the entrance to hell since pff, that's in Turkmenistan. Otherwise, they'd be concerned about what's beneath the kettle. And as another source explains, we can't just throw in a waterproof GPS. GPS devices only work on the surface. Another question, why don't we just drop a pack of scientists down there? In case you forgot, it's 244 meters or 800 feet deep and the water keeps going down there. So no, we can't put people in there. Pressure, temperature, and many other factors make it impossible to do. Another idea, why don't we just drop some camera that records? One, it will break because of shocks. Two, if it doesn't break, at some point, water will get in it anyway, even if it's the king of waterproofs. Three, the transmissions of the camera will be blocked by the rock. Four, it will be close to impossible to get somewhere with a camera and a long cable as the cable will get stuck everywhere. We aren't trying to have everything wireless for no reason. Because this devil's cuddle was so unknown, it would be dangerous to go in and even with the incredible technology we do have, we're still limited in some aspects. However, scientists didn't give up either. So where does all that water go? Well, the mystery has been solved as of 2017, thanks to hydrologists. Department of Natural Resources, or DNR, spring shed mapping hydrologist Jeff Green used to think that the water resurfaced in the river downstream. To test this theory, Green asked the DNR's water monitoring and surveys to measure the volume of water flowing above and below the kettle using stream gauging equipment. In the late fall of 2016, hydrologists Heather Emerson and John Libby measured water flow above Devil's Kettle at 123 cubic feet per second. Several hundred feet below the waterfall, the water was flowing at 121 cubic feet per second. In the world of stream gauging, those two numbers are essentially the same and are within the tolerance of the equipment, Green explains. The readings show no loss of water below the kettle, so it confirms the water is resurging in the stream below it. Though this may not be as fascinating of an explanation as lava tubes, it still impresses me how nature does this all the same. It really is like an optical illusion. NPR News wrote, The DNR said Tuesday it used science to conclude the water that disappeared into the rock at Devil's Kettle re-enters the river from underground. What we think is happening is the water is going in the kettle and coming up pretty close to the immediate downstream of the falls, Green said. Just to be absolutely sure, however, Green and Calvin Alexander, a colleague at the University of Minnesota, plan to conduct a dye trace this fall to show where the water resurfaces. During low water flow, they will pour a fluorescent biodegradable dye into the pothole and note where the dye re-enters the river. The dye is found in the river below the falls. As the scientists suspect, Green acknowledged much of the mystery will be lost. There's a little bit of that, he said, that folks aren't going to stand there and wonder, but it will still be a fascinating spot and a beautiful spot. A few people may be disappointed, admitted park manager Peter Mott, but eventually you learn to embrace that science and make 
make it part of your story. I found an updated 2017 article all about this, and it was confirmed that the water that empties into the Devil's Kettle joins the river from further downstream. No matter where the water comes up, even if there's not a magical reason behind it, people should still check it out. This is some incredible science going on, and I just wanted to share it with you all. Big thanks for joining me today. If you liked this little episode, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like more of me and my content, you can click the link below that'll take you to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash vampcandy, that's candy with a K, where you can hang out with me while I primarily play Dead by Daylight. Well, that's all I have for y'all today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!